Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Down to Earth Astronomy with another Q&A Astronomy video. Renwulf asked on a previous video how gravitational slingshots works or um, as they're also known gravitational assist. Now gravitational assist is a maneuver you can do in space that um, uses the gravity of, of a planet to accelerate your spacecraft without the use of your engines. So if we look at this in very uh, general terms, let's imagine that we have a um, planet and we're approaching the planet with our uh, spacecraft, like so. And in this uh, simple um, setup, we're just going to fly around the planet, turn all the way around, and come back at the other side. If we imagine that our spacecraft was initially um, approaching the planet with its total speed v, when we are out here on the other side of the planet, we will of course also have the total speed v just in the opposite direction. So we didn't get any additional speed, but if we look at the planet, but this time from an outside observer's point of view, the planet will of course um, be moving with a, a velocity itself, and let's call this a velocity for u. So if we're sitting down here and we're observing this planet, we will see this planet move along at the velocity u. So again we have our spacecraft that's approaching our planet here and we're still approaching with the uh, total speed v um, and this of course is also the absolute value. We're not working with vectors just yet, we'll do that later. So from an observer that's observing this setup we will see that the probe here is moving with a total speed of the magnitude of v minus the magnitude of u. So it's the total magnitude of the, um, of the satellite minus the total magnitude of the velocity of the planet because they're moving in opposite direction. However, once our satellite has moved all the way around the planet to the other side, we can now see that we know that its, um, that its velocity or its, um, its speed v is the same compared to the planet, but from the observer's point of view, this uh, satellite is now moving at the magnitude of the velocity vector of the probe plus the velocity, the magnitude of the velocity vector from the planet. So we have actually gained two times the velocity of or the magnitude of the velocity of the planet by doing this maneuver. And of course, that energy that we have uh, gained from doing this is lost from the planet, but because that the planets will often be so massive compared to the satellites, it is insignificant in um, in the grand scheme of things. So let's try to look at this in some more general terms, because of course, normally you will not be um, doing a 180 and turn all the way around the planet. What you will more often do is that if we still have our planet, and this time we're actually doing it with proper vectors, it's moving um, along a vector u. And our probe, our satellite, is now approaching the planet along a vector, let's call this v1, and that's a vector. We're then doing a flyby of the planet, which is sli will slightly alter our trajectory, and once this uh, flyby is over, and we are over here, we will be leaving the planet along a vector, and let's call that for v2. So in this case, we are moving in front of the planet and exiting in the opposite direction. So let's see what happens with, um, with our velocity here. Now initially, again, from an outside observer that's observing this setup, once we're down here, we can then add these two vectors up. So we add these together. Um, which means that we're going to have the velocity of the planet, this is the, the u vector, and we're going to have the velocity of, um, of the spacecraft here, let's call this for v1, which means we're going to have a total uh, velocity vector, which is this 
that I uh, marked here, and that is of course u vector as a vector as well, plus v1 vector. So if we do the same thing up here, once we're leaving the planet, we can see that we still have this u vector that doesn't change or change so so little that we don't really care about it. And here is our exiting vector, the v2 vector. And we can see that the sum of those two vectors, there you go, so u plus v2, here, this vector is shorter, or as it should be, shorter than this one. So in general terms, the, the length of the u plus the v2, those both vectors, should be shorter than the length of the u plus the v1, and those are also both vectors. So in the previous example here, we were moving in front of the planet, draw the same setup here, we're moving in front of the planet and leaving in the opposite direction compared to the planet's velocity. Now if we move in from behind the planet, so we're now starting over here, oh, I was poorly uh, drawn satellite, we're now starting over here with actually the same vector, v1, and moving in behind the planet and exiting out in front of it, such that when we're done, out here, we're still going to exit along now and there we go. Now a new vector, let's call this again v2. We can then see if we draw the same setup as we did before, from an outside observer, observing all of this, we'll be moving at u plus v1, and these are of course all vectors, and I forgot them everywhere. There we go. So we still have the same initial velocity as we did before, we're still going to have u plus v1 as our incoming velocity, and as an outcoming velocity, however, we now have, this is again the u vector, but now our, um, our exiting vector is going out here. This is of course a, a bit uh, overdrawn here, but this is v2, and we can see that the sum of these two vectors, so that's u plus v2, this is definitely greater than this vector was before. Um, so again, the tighter you go to the planet, the more you curve your um, your trajectory, the greater the boost you're going to get in velocity. But of course, that also means you're going to alter your trajectory more. And this method has been used in, in several missions, um, most notably the Voyager missions, of course, which use this maneuver on several of the last uh, large uh, gas giants on its way out of the solar system. I hope that the that this was um, was interesting and that you, you find it uh, that find it useful. And if you did, give the video a like, a like down below. Leave a comment on under the video so I know what you what I should do next. And subscribe to the channel so you know when the next one's up. And until next time, I'll see you guys in space.